Does a throat with a little oh my god. This is Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my February wrap-up for 2024. I read a total of 14 books this month, so I will be splitting it up into two separate parts. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is Thank You for Sharing by Rachel Runia Katz, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Daniel and Laya, who met at summer camp. 14 years ago, they were best friends until an incident happened and they grew apart. Years Years later, they meet again on an airplane and their rivalry begins again. When Daniel's marketing team is hired by the museum Laya is a junior curator at, they are tasked to work together on a very important project. This was a pretty cute read. I am a sucker for second chance romances, especially if it's an enemies to lovers. I did enjoy both Laya and Daniel as main characters and I really liked getting both of their point of views in this. Laya got on my nerves a little bit. I do think that her whole reasoning of being upset in the first place was a little bit much, but she definitely did grow on me by the end of the story. Daniel was so sweet and caring, even when Laya was trying to push him away. It's definitely a slow burn romance, but I did really like seeing them reconnect, and I thought it was kind of funny them trying to deny the chemistry that they had with one another. I think that they were both very open and honest with each other, and that laid a very good groundwork for for their relationship. I also adored the found family in this. I think that the survival club was so fun and it definitely broke up the more serious moments of the book, so I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. I really like this one. Next up, I read Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. We are again following Viv, who was injured in battle, so she is posted up in a small town of Merck. There, she meets Fern, a bookshop owner who is in desperate need of a rebrand, and she also has a new enemy in the midst, and it's the story of that. I enjoyed this, but definitely not as much as Legends and Lattes. I listened to this on audiobook and the narrator did a really good job of capturing the vibes of the story. I really liked watching Viv discover her love for reading in this and I really liked the friendships that she made while she was in the town of Mark. The side characters were definitely the highlight of the story for me. I absolutely adored Fern and Pot Roast. Fern was just so funny and she definitely made me giggle a couple of times with her little foul mouth. Satchel was definitely my favorite side character out of everybody. He it definitely reminds me of Dry Bones from, like, Mario. You, you know what I'm talking about. I'll put up a picture here, but he's he is the epitome of Dry Bones. I think that the main complaint I had with this one was the romance. I just could not care less about it. I definitely prefer the romance that was in Legends and Lattes, but overall still really fun. Four out of five stars. Next up, I read The Trade-Off by Sandy Jones, and I gave this one four out of five stars as well. Apparently, this is the month of four out of five stars for me. This follows Stella, who is the deputy editor at The Globe, and she is hardened by work. And then we also follow Jess, who is a rookie reporter who just wants to report the truth. When a story drops about a celebrity that ruins their life, Jess is absolutely distraught, and she decides that she is going to stop the paper from harming anyone else. This is a slower-paced thriller that explores the darker sides of journalism as well as the Me Too movement. I wouldn't necessarily call this a thriller. I think it's more of a drama with a few suspenseful scenes. It starts off very slow when we are learning about Jess and Estella and their differing takes on their jobs. It does pick up in the second half of the book and I definitely enjoyed that part much better. I was very invested in the story and I did end up finishing it in one sitting, but keep in mind it is very slow paced. I listened to it on audiobook and there are multiple narrators for the story. I do think that that helped highlight the characters a lot more. Stella was definitely an unlikable character, but she does definitely go through some character development in the end, which made me like her a little bit more. I like Jess more, but she was a little bit too naive at times, so it was an interesting balance of the two. Overall, this was a very quick and easy read with some pretty strong female leads, so I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Thieves' Gambit. This is by Kay Von Lewis, and guess what I gave it? You're right, 4 out of 5 stars yet again. This follows 17-year-old Ross Quest, who is a part of a legendary family of thieves. She dreams of something bigger, and she is actually planning to leave the family for a little while. 
On the night of her escape, her mother is kidnapped, and so Quest decides that she is going to join the Thieves' Gambit, which is a competition of challenging heists where the winner is granted one wish for anything that they desire. When she arrives at the competition, she comes face to face with her childhood nemesis along with a very cute boy. Although this was a very predictable story, it was really fun nonetheless. It was a very easy, quick read and very fast paced. I liked Quest as a main character. I think that she was very likable and she did go through a lot of character development in the end. I was not the biggest fan of the romance. I do see why it was necessary so that we could see the more vulnerable side of Quest, but I just wish that there was more of a sole focus on the competition and getting her mom back. I think that the challenges were the best part of the book and I really liked watching Quest work with people other than her family and learn to trust them. I am definitely intrigued by the next book. I will be picking it up if I get the chance, and yeah, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. It was super fun. The next book I have is Fly With Me by Andy Burke, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely adored it. So this follows Olive Murphy, who is a traveling nurse, but she is terrified of flying. She is on her first ever flight, and somebody has a medical emergency, and she ends up saving their life. Unfortunately, this causes her to miss her next flight, which she needed to be on so that she could run a marathon in honor of her brother. Co-pilot Stella Soriano offers Olive a ride to the race and they end up spending a day together. When the video of Olive saving the man's life goes viral, this brings big ticket sales to the airline and Stella proposes that they begin fake dating so that Stella can earn her pilot wings. But as the two grow closer, they can't deny their chemistry. I absolutely loved this sapphic story. I loved both of the characters. They went through so much character development, not only together, but individually as well. We only get to see Olive's point of view, which was a little disappointing because I think that being able to see inside of Stella's head would have been very interesting. At the beginning, I was not the biggest fan of Stella. Oftentimes, she puts her foot in her mouth when she's speaking to Olive, and I just couldn't stand her. But as you read on, she definitely grows on you. You start to see that she doesn't mean the insensitive things that she says. She just blurts things out sometimes because she's so used to men talking over her all the time, so she speaks before she thinks. Fake dating is one of my all-time favorite tropes, so I ate this up. I love loved the banter that these two had with one another, and I think that their connection was very genuine. There were some deeper topics like mental health, anxiety, grief, misogyny that I think were done very well. The contrast between Olive and her family and Stella and her father was also a very interesting part of the story. Bring in Olive's crazy ex-girlfriend and that was a whole other complicated relationship to have to deal with as well. I do wish that Lindsay had a few consequences for the things that she put Olive through in the end, but it is what it is. I will definitely be checking out more of Andy Burke's writing in the future. Five out of five stars, definitely recommend this one. The next book that I have is Speak of the Devil by Rose Wilding, and I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows a group of seven women who meet in a hotel room where they see a severed head on the table of a man they all once knew. They all have reasons for wanting this man dead, but they need to figure out who actually committed the murder. I think that this started off so strong. I got a little bit bored in the middle, but it does pick up again at the end. I was very interested in these women and their relationship with Jamie and the awful things that he did to them. We get the point of view of all seven women, which I did enjoy, but I do think that it was a lot of characters to keep track of, which made it very hard to fully immerse into the story. It was an extremely fast read though, and I did read it in one sitting. I do think that the ending was a little bit abrupt, which was kind of jarring, but overall it was an okay read. I gave it a 3.5 out of five stars. The next book that I read was Rosie Frost and the Falcon Queen, and this is by a Spice Girl, actually, which is kind of cool. It's Ginger Spice, who is Jerry Hallowell Horner, and I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. 
So this follows Rosie Frost, who is suddenly orphaned. She is sent to Bloodstone Island, which is a school for extraordinary teens and also a sanctuary for endangered species. When she arrives, she uncovers a sinister plot and she must join the Falcon Games in order to stop the evil headmaster. I listened to this on audiobook, which is narrated by the author, and I think she did an incredible job with her characters. This is a middle grade book all about believing in yourself and I think that it did a really great job of sending that message. I really loved Rosie. I think that a lot of young readers will look up to her after reading her story. She is just so strong-willed and determined and never backs down from a challenge and I think that that trait is very admirable. I was not the biggest fan of the mean girl in this. Her name is Audily, I think it was. She was just such a cardboard cutout of your typical mean girl. I just, I couldn't care less about her. It was a pretty predictable plot. We do get left off on a cliffhanger, which I'm assuming is setting up for more of Rosie's adventures. I did have a lot of fun with this. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. All right, everybody, so those are the first seven books that I read for the month of February. If you are interested in part two, that will be up on my channel soon. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>